Okay, guys, uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, I can see that there's quite a few new faces here, so welcome to those who are you know, new here, and it's really good to see you here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Dippen, and um, I'm, I'm the head of uh, professional services at Pharma Plus, and uh, uh, for my sins, I should say. Um, but uh, yeah, a very lovely role, um, although I'm sure you're not here to, to discuss that. Um, those of you who, who, who are new here, basically this is something that we do on a monthly basis. It's um, normally the last Tuesday or Thursday of each month. And um, we, we tend to pick topics of, um, of, of topical things, really, that, that are going on in, in, in the world of the NHS and pharmacy in general. Now, the, the, there's a couple of things, just a few ground rules. This is going to be recorded, um, so we're going to put that on the website as usual. Um, the second thing is, is that feel free to ask any questions. If you want to interrupt me, uh, feel free to do so. Um, I think m most of you here have got some microphones. If you if you want to, then that's not a problem. If you are feeling a bit shy, then there is um, a chat function on your on your panel as well. And all you'll need to do is just type in there, and I'll get it, um, uh, and, I'll, and I'll be able to see it here, and I'll and I'll be able to discuss it with you either individually or as a group if you if you so desire. Um, so just a few few things to bear in mind. Now I anticipate this will probably last for about an hour. Um, hopefully I should be able to get through it before then and and let you go off. But uh, as you'll see from this particular topic, it is um, one of the most boring. I mean I can't really phrase it in any other way really, but it's one of the most boring subjects you'll come across. And um, for those of you who've done previous webinars with me, you, you'll tend to see that I tend to do it in a, in a, in a mind map format. But however, this time round, I've, um, I've decided that that would be even worse um, than, 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 than doing it like I normally do. Sorry. Um, bear with me. Sorry, uh, somebody has just pressed the wrong button, so bear with me a minute. I am going to redo this, so, okay, there we go, sorry about this. Um, yeah, so th today what I will be doing, I will be doing it as a um, PowerPoint uh, presentation. But again, as I said, feel free to interrupt me, um, type in questions as you see fit. So let me just uh, take that bit off, and I'm going to just put that one on here. Here we are. And let me just log in here. Here we are. OK, so today what we'll be doing is we'll be talking about bids and tendering. Now, uh, it is, as I said, it is quite a complicated area. And in, in, in the space of time that we've actually got, it's going to be very difficult for me to go over the intricacies of it. So um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to be telling you how to fill in a PQQ or how to um, fill in an ITT if, if, you, if you're aware of the terminology behind it. What I will be telling you, however, is what the process actually is. Um, and understanding the process is, is actually about 90% of the game. Um, a lot of these things you can actually outsource. And um, if we're at Pharma Plus, we're actually in late stage discussions with um, with several organizations, one in particular, who, who we will be using to put in these bids in the first place. So, um, and, and part of the presentation will actually be related to that as well. So what I won't be talking to you about is how you actually write the bid, but I want to talk to you about the preparation that you need to do in order to put in a bid and also what the bid um, and how you act, what the process of the bidding is as well, which is just as complicated as probably putting in the bid in the first place. Um, because it is such a boring process, sorry, I'm going to move on, hold on. Because it's such a boring process, you'll actually see I've put wake-up slides inside as well. So if you do notice a rather unusual slide, it wasn't me who put it in, it was one of my colleagues at work, but they're actually quite nice. So you'll see what I mean when you see a wake-up slide. But anyway, as I said here, why do we bother with this? So, um, and, and, and a lot of you who know me um, personally will probably see that I am quite narcissistic, but uh, that, that's just me, I'm afraid. But it is a very boring area to discuss, and seriously, but somebody has to do it. Um, I've actually been given the short straw. I was actually going to give somebody else the, the pleasure of doing this, but um, I've actually got a lot of experience with this. I've written tenders, I've put in bids, um, so I've got experience in both um, areas. 
So if you do need some one-on-one -on -one tuition, if you do need some one-on-one -on -one advice, then feel free to contact me at the office. Um, you know the phone plus number. I'll give it to you at the end of this presentation. Just pick up the phone and phone me or email me, and I'll be happy to help you out. If I don't know the answer, I will find out for you. Now, the good thing about this is that if you get the bidding process right, and if you actually get the service, you could actually mint a lot of money as a result of it. And I've seen... Um, and I've written tenders, for example, for, for, for LPS pharmacies, and, you know, worth millions. So um, this is something that you could make quite a lot of money out of if you get it right. However, it could go the other way if you get it wrong. In other words, you could put in a lot of effort putting in a bid, only for it then to go to somebody else, and you've wasted all that time. So it's really important to get it right from the very beginning. And finally, okay, the... The other reason why you really should put in bids is that there are other things that you know you, you, you could do to improve patient care, pharmacy image, etc. But we all know that the one the major reason why you would put in bids is to, to, to try and make money as well. So I'm not going to beat around the bush in that way, but um, but really that, that that is the main reason. And hopefully um, by the end of this um, presentation, you'll get a much better idea as to how complicated this process is. So let's move on. Again, feel free to, to interrupt me at any stage should you want to. Now, what is the tendering and bidding? And my answer to that is honestly, I don't think there's very many people in this world who actually knows for certain. I'm sure you can look it up in a dictionary, but uh, my definition is that it's something to do with somebody wanting to set up a service and asking others if they can provide it. Um, so for example, you've got a CCG out there, a clinical commissioning group or a local authority, they're looking to put together a particular service. They're going to ask people to provide that service, and that is putting um, putting a tender out. So there are two different processes. There's a tendering process, which we're not going to go into too much, and then there is a bidding process. The tendering is basically putting it all out there, um, asking people, Are you, do you want to provide this service? And the bidding process is when you, as, as a contractor, as a pharmacist, actually put in the bid and say, yes, you can provide the service for X amount of money. And in effect, that's what a bid is. Now, after they have put out this particular uh, tender, you need to show them that you are able to provide that service. And that means giving them lots and lots of paper. And I don't mean just blank Xerox paper. I really mean it is lots and lots of paper. I mean, there's some bids out there that I've looked at that have gone into over 400 pages. And believe it or not, and uh, it's, it's it's a lot of work for, for yourselves to do, and uh, and 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 this this again shows the, the the difficulty in the process. So if all goes well, you will get the service um, after after the, um, the the bids have been evaluated, and hopefully then you'll be in a position to provide that service as well, and 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 make your money as well. So. Those are two two introductory slides, really. And as Alexander Orloff would say, simple. I love that one. Um, I'm, I'm sure you know, compared to Mayor Caps, and I, I love him. I've actually got him on my Facebook as well. So this is one of your wake-up slides. And if you want this slide, yeah, I've got a little uh, shining arrow. It is available from the, uh, the Pharma Plus Marketing website. If you want it, we can make it for you. We can put it in laminate. Um, and to be honest with you, I've actually got a cup of tea here as well. Actually, it's not coffee, it's a strong cup of coffee, and I'm seriously thinking of buying this one as well. Anyway, sorry, uh, bad joke. Now, back to business. Um, the NHS changed. So why, why on earth am I going over this with you? Um, the, 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 the reason is simple, really. The NHS changed probably for the millionth time again, and this time it changed in April 2013, but this time, it was um, a huge change, and, and that's, that's huge for, for, for any words, really. Now, what happened? Um, oh, yeah, sorry, it wasn't a Mickey Mouse change. Um, I don't know why I chose Mickey Mouse. It could have been Minnie Mouse, but, yeah, it's Mickey Mouse anyway. PCTs went. They, 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 they effectively got rid of the PCTs, and um, a lot of you would probably sigh of, um, some relief with that. However, um, CCGs, clinical commission groups, and local authorities came in who will then provide the service. So CCGs, um, I'm sure you're well aware, clinical commission groups are mainly comprised of GPs and, and a few other um, healthcare professionals, but not pharmacists, unfortunately. 
So the, um, and the local authorities um, are, are, are the ones like the council, etc., who are going to be taking over the public health role. So the CPGs um, generally tend to look over more the clinical part of it. Um, the, 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 the local authorities will look after the public health, things like smoking cessation, EHC, those sorts of things. And um, they will decide what to commission. Um, they, they could decide, for example, that they want to commission an EHC service. They could. So I think somebody accidentally unmuted themselves there. Um, okay, so uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so they will decide what to, to commission. Now, uh, the problem is that pharmacists. Unfortunately, what used to happen, well, what used to happen before, was that the PCT themselves used to go out to the pharmacist and say, "Would you mind providing this smoking cessation service, or would you mind providing the EHC service?" And if if everything went well, the pharmacist would say, "Yeah, we can do that," and then they would get the service without much hassle whatsoever. The problem is things have changed now. It's not going to really go like that. You under the any qualified provider route. They won't be coming knocking on your doors. In actual fact, you're going to have to put in bids to get these services. Now, what I've also done is that I've got, um, I'm, I just want to just quickly go over this one here. This is something that I picked out a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it's quite a nice one in actual fact. This is an example of a tender that went out. Um, and as you can see, I'm going to use my little annotate pen. Uh, okay, hopefully it won't crash. Okay, so as you can see, some buzzwords here, any qualified provider. Now, this particular service, if you look at it, is a tailored dispensing service. So, obviously, it's one which is completely suited for, for pharmacists. But having said that, they're looking for any qualified provider. So, in other words, they're not just looking for pharmacists, even though probably this is what that's what's going to end up um, providing the service. What they are looking for is any qualified provider, so anybody can provide the service. So, Bearing in mind, if something like this was to be put out in the era of PCT, they probably would have gone straight to the, the pharmacies themselves. However, in this new world, they're not just going to be looking at pharmacists, they're going to be looking at any qualified provider. So you're competing not just against other pharmacists, but with everybody else out there who has the potential to, to, to create this service. And this, again, AQP, any qualified provider, is, is 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 a buzzword as well. It's something that um, that that's going to scare a lot of people and put and 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 I'm afraid you, 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 we will be competing against other people. So if you look in here, it's going to be, uh, I think this particular one was, to, patients will be assessed by mass to see if an auxiliary, um, auxiliary aid, um, dispensing adjustment, compliance aid, or medicines reminder system is needed. Um, and I mean, you can see this is, this is a service that obviously is suited to pharmacies, but they've, they've tended it out to everybody. So just um, just something uh, for you to, 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 to look at. and. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll, in, in this presentation, what I'll do is I'll go over some um, websites that you yourselves can look at, um, where you can get these these sorts of tenders that are coming out before the majority of people um, are able to see it. So uh, just that's just an example. So how do I put in a bid? So let's say, for example, let's go back on slide. Let's say, for example, you're in Bromley. You decide, ah, this looks like a, a nice service for me to provide. What on earth do you need to do? And um, and, and, and that is uh, that, that is a sixty-four thousand dollar question. Um, the thing is that before you even think about putting in a bid, um, you need to go back a few steps. And what I've done here is a proprietary formula. It's called DIPS formula, uh, but uh, you can call it anything else you want really, because it's not actually patented or anything like that. So, uh, but I call it DIPS formula because my name's different. But anyway. Uh, the first step you need to do is to prepare. Now, prepare not just for the bid itself, but you need to prepare yourself as an organization to take on bids in the first place. And by that, what I mean, and this is quite a busy slide, so I'll, I'll, I'll go over each point with you in turn. Um, so there's, there's several questions that you need to ask yourself. The first thing is, do I have the willpower to make this happen? Um, and by willpower, what I mean is, is that, as we'll come on to it in a bit, th these bids take a lot of time to, to write and to create um, on, on, your, on your behalf. And if you're going to be doing this on your own, you're, you're probably not going to get these bids unless you're very, very lucky or unless you're extremely good at what you do. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I've actually put in the, first, the next two points here. The first thing is, can I group together with other like-minded people to create a really good service? 
Now, what we're doing at Farm Plus at the moment is that we're trying to put these people together. We're looking out for these bids as well, and we're trying to put people in contact with people. So as soon as something comes up, we will we will try and do that for you. But that doesn't mean. Um, uh, okay, I've just got a, a message here. Um, um, I'll. I'll um, how do I find out about a tender in the first place? I'll come on to that in a bit. Um, that's that's another part that I'll come on to. So, so uh, just bear with me a bit, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you know. So anyway, let's uh, so let's uh, start off with um, uh, can I group together with other like-minded people to create a really good service? So if you know people in your area, it is a good idea to have a chat with them just generally before you even put in a tender, or before you even think about going on to a tender's website. If you've got your infrastructure in place, like a limited company or um, a partnership of some sort, you stand a much better chance of getting these things. The second thing you need to consider is can I hire additional talent to help me construct these bids? Now, again, we've been in contact with a number of providers out there, um, and one particular one that we are going to be using um, are experts in this field. So, if you do see something that you like, um, then then let us know, and we can put you in contact with these people. Um, that they are very very good, and we're actually using them to to construct our own bids as well. So if you do need somebody out there, let us know. They are a bit expensive, but as you'll see when the time comes in the next few slides, you'll see how much work is involved. Um, that's the reason why you would want to look for um, sharing the workload in effect and hiring in experts. You really do not want to waste your time on this if if you're not going to do it. Well, good job of it. The other thing you may want to know um, is what is my current knowledge of what is needed in the area. Now, by this, what I mean is, is that there is a certain form of bid called a proactive bid. Now, what we've talked about so far is the CCGs coming out to you, saying we want X, Y, Z. There's no reason why, for example, you couldn't do the opposite. You couldn't go. You, you could, for example, go to the CCG and say, you know what, we've got a huge issue with asthma in this area. What are you doing about it? I can provide you with a service of some sort. A bit more difficult to pull that one off. But um, there's there's always there, there is a there's a possibility you could even do that if if you wanted to. So um, if you have a good knowledge of your area, your geographical area, and what's got what's needed and what's what's going on, um, then you, again you stand a much better chance. And the other two, this one here is not an absolute, but um, it is actually an important one. Um, do I have at least three years of provable accounts? Now generally when you when you look at uh, tenders and when people look at tenders, they're going to want a financial history behind you. They're going to want to know that you're not going to go bust in the next few days or next few months. So hence, what you will need to do is um, is somehow um, try and produce at least three years. That doesn't mean to say you're not going to get it if you can't provide it, but it might, it puts you in an infinitely better position if you can. Um, but anyway, I've I've seen organisations that have won bids without this particular rule, but uh, it, it is a much better it puts you in a much better um, stead. And the other thing is, do I know the necessary people in the CCGs to get insider information? And um, I know insider information is a bad thing, or people say it's a bad thing, but if you know what's going to happen before it happens, it would certainly do you uh, the world of good as well. So this is effectively the preparation stage. If you can somehow um, especially with this one here, um, group together with, with other like-minded individuals. We can help you with this if, if we know of other Pharma Plus members in our area. Uh, um, you know, I'm sure you know of people in your area as well. That That is the key to it, linking with other people out there. Now, let's uh, move on. Now, step two, check the adverts. Um, and I think this is uh, the this is going to be one of the answers to to the question that was posed a bit earlier on my chat. So hopefully this should answer your question. If it isn't, then let me know, and, and I'll go over in a bit more depth. Now the first thing is is that after you've prepared yourself for these bids, then you start looking for these bids. So these tenders, I should say. So not bids, tenders. Now uh, you might get something through the post, which is rather unlikely. Or what you could do is you could be proactive and actively look as to what's going on out there. Now, there are several things you can do, uh, but the main one to find bids, uh, to find tenders, sorry, is to is to look at um, the, the, the various tender websites out there, and, and, and I'll go into one which we subscribe, subscribe to at Farm Plus. 
Um, I mean, I, I, what I did, I just Googled, um, I mean, to, when, I, when I came across these different websites, I just Googled NHS tenders. And all, and, and you know, you've got about 40 or 50 different sort of like websites out there which will provide you information on this particular subject. There's a very good one that we subscribe to. Now, it is a subscription only one, this one. This one, sorry, um, Tenders Direct. Very good one, and, and I'll show you this in a minute. There are free ones out there as well. There's supplychain.nhs.uk, tenderservice.co.uk. They're, they're, they're free ones there as well, but we subscribe to one. Um, the reason is that they actually filter out the ones which are good for us as pharmacists. And what we will do is we'll keep an eye out for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm hoping that this is going to work. Bear with me. I'm going to, I'm going to click on this and I'll show you this. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see this. This is um, one, of the, um, one of the things that we've um, subscribed to. Um, and it's called Tenders Direct. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you yourself subscribe to this because it is extremely expensive. You're looking at probably about £600 a year, but it's worth it for us because we've got the resources. But for yourselves, um, probably not the best of ideas. But again, we will look out for you. So if you want, uh, if you want information on a particular area, let us know and we'll keep an eye out for you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is uh, this is the control panel here, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to click on tender notices. I think that's the one. There we are. Okay. Now what they've done for us is they sort of like um, uh, given us a, a a summary of some of the things that we may want to look at. Um, now half of these, and actually about ninety percent of these, are things that I would not want to look at. So for example, there's no way that I'm going to be looking at. Actually, that's not bad. On community substance misuse services. Um, possibly something you may want to look at. Let's see if we can find something here which a pharmacist may want to look at. Bear with me a minute. Let's see if I can find one here. Uh, community research service, no. As you can see, uh, hold on. No, not that one. Pharmaceutical products, possibly. Ah, here we go. <laughs> stop smoking services. Let's have a look at that one. So, any a UK Worcester, stop smoking services. And now, the good thing about this one is it also gives us, um, in actual fact, this is an active um, um, tender uh, because they've got, we've got 31 days to respond to this tender. So if you happen to be in Worcester, uh, in actual fact, I've got um, intelligence today that to say that a lot of stop smoking um, services are going to be going out to tender very soon. Um, so this is probably the first in many. Um, so keep an eye out in your area. But let's click on this one and see what happens. So we've got stop smoking services now. Let's see. So you've got, yep, there's an invitation to tender. Um, and let's see what they are. So it gives you a summary of some of the things that they want. Well, this is actually not a very detailed summary, believe it or not. But what they're asking for is the provision of high stop quality st um, stop smoking quality services prior to your Worcester, blah, blah, blah. Um, OK. OK, that's nothing much there. So let's see. So description. The provision of a high quality stop smoking services, oh, it's the same thing, they just literally just reprinted it. Okay, so they're saying the contract duration is 42 months. Um, okay, this is a pretty dark one. But what you, what, essentially what you're looking at is uh, you're looking at this particular um, link. Um, when you link, when you click on that, let's click on that. Okay, so what you would then do is then you would register for that particular service. So you would, you would actually put in, they normally have some sort of uh, electronic way of, either, there you go, e-tendering. So you'll put in all your information and then they will send you more information on how to put in a bid for that service. So um, so that's the easiest way of, 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 of looking for, for, for tenders out there. So as you can see, you know, within the space of um, literally two minutes, I've gone from, uh, um, filtering out what's out there, thinking, homing in on a particular service that a pharmacist could provide, then going on and, um, and you know, in five minutes later I could have registered on their website, got all the information on a particular tender, and there you go. It's as simple as that. So there are other ones out there, other free ones, so let's go and turn another one. Uh, bear with me. Let's look at supplychain.nhs.uk. Let's close that one. There you go. So in other words, uh, I'm, again, I'm not going to go over the whole thing again, but um, my username is not Jipper, by the way. I don't know why it's called this or that. Anyway, um, 
So again, you know, you've got um, all you will need to do here is you need to register with it. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, a little bit more cumbersome, mind you. But you know, again, you know, you're you're, you're going to get all the opportunities um, um, sort of coming up as well. And um, the, the problem with this one is that it's a bit more difficult to home in than a on a pharmacy-based service. So, um, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say to you is, is if you've got a particular area in mind um, that you're you're intending to, if you've got yourself set up, let us know, and we can keep an eye out for you um, using our Tender Direct website, and we um, really have a subscription for that. So. I'm hoping that that answers the question as to how you find out about a tender um, in the first place. A little bit more complicated, but um, but 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 it, it, it's it's uh, there, there are things out there that, that you can do. Um, okay, so actually, actually, you know what? Let me do one more thing. Uh, this is something that I haven't planned for, so bear with me a minute. Let me show you. Uh, okay, hold on. Pharma Plus, uh, Member Resources, Download Documents, I think that's the one. There you go, and the NHS Tenders. Now what I've done is there are, um, there, there's a little section here, um, on, on, and what I do is I try and keep this updated as well. So if I see something that you might want to look at, you know, uh, then 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 I'll put it, I'll post it onto here. So for example, with this one, I noticed that there was a okay. Let's just look at this. There's a pharmacy in Chester. In actual fact, they were they were an, in, uh, whoever was dealing with Chester. I think it was probably Chester PCU, wherever it was at the time. Uh, were 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 tendering for an LPS pharmacy, and there were actually a few others like this. Um, there you go. So in other words, this again was a tender's direct website. I noticed that there was a pharmacy service there, an invitation to tender notice. Um, the deadline's already passed, mind you, so we can't use this anymore. But again, you've got a much more detailed service. If forever, if for, for example, you wanted to um, open up a pharmacy uh, in a different area, this could be a really good way of doing it. Um, it might be a bit more difficult now with CCGs and, 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 and the local authorities, but uh, they're still out there. So for example, uh, let's go back again, one more. Uh, I found one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that was the same one, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. There were 11 pharmacies, um, or potentially about 10 to 11 pharmacies that um, that we picked up on. So um, that hopefully should answer your question. And uh, um, as you can see, it's not that difficult. Now, this is another wake up slide. So, uh, and if your dad's out there, by the way. Okay, um, enough waking up now. Okay, let's go into the third step, the bid. Um, now, sorry about that, it was getting rather dark. I just uh, got up for a bit. Now, the, the bid. Now, that, that, this is going to be the most difficult area um, for me to cover. In fact, that's the most uh, tedious area as well. I'm not going to go, I'm, I'm going to just quickly tell you what the bid is. Now, after you've checked the advert, after you've decided whether or not something's suitable for you, you want to put in the bid. Now we're going to go over the process in a few minutes, uh, and in a nutshell, this is where you do nothing but paperwork for the next three months, and then you hope. Uh, and I'm not, and I'm being completely serious now. I'm, I'm, I'm not sort of like being sarcastic like I normally am. You, you are looking at a, a number of months, on possibly two, three, and I've, I've seen tenders that go on for, for a year. You're looking for a lot of paperwork that you'll need to put together. And hence the reason why, if you've got your infrastructure in place, if you've got um, the people in place already, if you've got the contacts and the and the um, and perhaps even a limited company of some sort in place already, you stand a much better chance than just finding an advert and hoping for the best. Because it, uh, if you've got all that together, you're going to find this a lot easier. Again, that's where we can come and we can help you with that. Now I'll go over the formula in a minute, but then step four you would then want to provide the service. So in other words, you would go, this is the most important part of the service. Usually it has inbuilt mechanisms of performance management. In other words, what you'll do is you'll sign a contract with them and they will monitor you on your performance. And it's normally for a set period of time. So for example, with the LPS pharmacy that we had up there, I think it was for a period of three years. Um, there are other services that, that depending upon um, the length of time that they uh, they require that, that you know the smoking station service might be a year or so, a wording contract or, or whatever. It depends upon the service itself. 
So that's the most um, that's the most important part, obviously, providing service. But I'm going to go back one step and go into um, step three now, which is how do you put in the bid? Which is what we I hope we we, we sort of like came here for um, in a, in, a, in a roundabout manner. Okay, hate that one, that error. Okay, now um, I I mistyped something. I should really have started at one here, but um, oh no, sorry, no, it is two. It is two. Sorry, that's step two. It is step two. Um, remember we, we talked about the advert earlier on? Now, once you put in the advert and once you put in a bid, you've got to go through a murderous cycle um, called an MOI, a PQQ, then an ITT, then a contract, and then you've got to mobilize, and then you've got to provide the service. And we'll go over each of these steps in, in a little bit of detail now. Um, so let's go back to this one. You've already done the preparation. You've already seen the advert. What we're doing now is this bit of the cycle. So you see where the arrows are. We're going to go around from 3A to 3E now. Oh, so this is another wake up slide. I think it's preparing you for the worst. Whoops. Sorry about that. Again, if you want this blown up, if you want this on your pharmacy wall, then feel free to let me know and I'll do that. I'll post it out to you even. Actually, whoever sent this to me is actually quite. Actually, maybe I shouldn't have put this one on. It's quite a uh, no, sorry, bad one. I shouldn't have put this on, especially on a professional website. Okay, let's start. Make a start now. Um, MOI. Now, this stands for Memorandum of Information, uh, and as its name suggests, it is um, a whole lot of information that they will send you regarding a service. Um, now, what this is, is that essentially is information on the service. They will normally provide you with a draft contract at this stage as well, uh, just to give you an idea of what you're letting yourself in for. And all this is essentially to let you know, to, to inform you as to whether or not you want to go for it or not. Um, what I'll do, um, and, and sorry, and if, you, if you are interested, you will then submit an EOI, which is an expression of interest. You'll then email them saying, yeah, I'm interested in the service. Um, yeah, please put me on your mailing list. Now, what I'm going to try and do is let me see if I oops, sorry, let me see if I can do something. Um, let's look at MOI. Uh, mem more and, um, of information. Now, bearing in mind this process um, is uh, is applicable to any government contract so it doesn't have to be pharmacy related so let's see if we can find anything on here uh, with, with relation to pharmacy uh, no I don't can't see anything yet um, there you go memorandum of information tower hamlets now let's see here ah this is a good one let's try this one so this is a memorandum of information provides information relating to the tower hamlets procurement of LPS pharmacy that sounds like a good one However, out complete our date, 2011, but let's have a look at it. Um, hopefully it's not too big. Ah, I'm going to probably stop that in actual fact. It's 13 megabytes. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. But you can, you can get the gist of it. So it really is just a whole load of information that they'll send on to you with regards to the, um, uh, the, 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 the pharmacy itself or whatever service you want to provide. So let's move on. Uh, that's the first stage. Okay, and what you'll do is you'll send an expression of interest saying, yep, yeah, I'm interested, and then they'll put you in for the next stage of the process, which is uh, the PQQ, the dreaded PQQ. Um, now, PQQ stands for Preliminary Qualifying Questionnaire, PQQ. Now, uh, this is uh, essentially uh, filtering out the candidates. So, um, if you've done your preparatory work, if you've done your, uh, if you've if you've spoken to other individuals around in your area, if you've got your company accounts together, possibly even um, all those sorts of bits. If you've done your preparatory work, then you stand a very good chance of getting through this PQQ stage. Really, essentially, what it is, it's filtering out the no hopers, and, and I can't really say it any more bluntly than that. Um, so, and what 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 this what this is designed to do is designed to normally filter it down to about four or five different candidates, depending upon the service. Now, uh, just, a, just a little bit of information here. You're going to be competing against people who do this for a living. 
So, for example, Virgin Active, you're going to be competing against possibly Boots or Lloyds, um, you know, people who are going to be doing this uh, on, on, on a full-time basis. They're going to do exactly the process that I've, I've, I've outlined to you now. Um, they will be doing it every single day, not 24 hours. I mean, they probably don't have lives like me, but um, actually, I don't have a life. But, uh, but it, uh, sorry, I'm really getting. You'll, you'll, you'll see that I tend to get distracted quite easily. Um, but, but you get the gist. They'll do it. They'll do it five days a week, full time, uh, and they are going to be experts on this. And hence the reason why you need to get yourself prepared before you even get to the PQQ stage. Now, remember earlier what I did was. That showed you that bid. Let me go back to it. Uh, that one, that tender. Do you remember that tender? Um, there you go, the Bromley one. Okay. So let's have a look. So what? If, uh, I haven't put it here, but at the bottom of this, it actually had a, uh, a link to the PQQ itself. So let's have a quick look at what the PQQ for that one is. Uh, there we go. Okay, that was the tender. Now, unfortunately, this particular one is closed now, um, so you're not going to be able to bid for it. Um, let's so yes, and you'll get an, and you'll get an idea of the enormity of the task that that confronts you. So hopefully everything should be okay. Ah, here we are. That was quick. Okay. So remember AQP, an qualified provider, even though it's definitely a pharmacy-based service. Um, so let's have a look. They are expecting you 26 pages. This particular one, so you're going to have to read through 26 pages. Um, let's get to the question. So I'm not going to go over all this. Um, this is basically guidance notes. It gives you a bit of time scale as to when it's going to be completed. So this, crikey, they really are looking for somebody quite fast. They're looking for, geez, they wanted somebody in three months. So um, this particular advert went out on the 19th of March. They want somebody for June. So, you know, if you haven't done any preparation work, you're not going to get this. So let's have a look at some of the questions. So these are some of the questions they're going to ask you. One point one. Uh, okay, some of them are just pretty, pretty much tick tick box questions, but let's go into some of the more meaty ones. Here we go. Okay, so in other words, you're going to need to write a thousand word essay. This is going back to your your your, your school days, I suppose. Um, and let's have a look at one of the questions. For reference to the offer documentation. Please describe the experience you have of delivering this service and how you intended to deliver this service for the for the duration of the contract. A thousand words. And what it will do is it will give you an idea of the sorts of things that they're going to want to ask you. Um, you know, your, your response should be included, things like how do you expect to meet the outcomes of the service, blah, blah, blah. But a thousand words, you know, that's going to take a lot of thought. And then it gets worse. You know, for this particular one, they're going to ask you for another thousand word essay. And then another thousand word essay, another thousand word essay. And you get the gist. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oh my word. 12, 13, 13 and a quarter, 14, 15. So 15,000 words just to qualify for the next age. So you, you, I'm hoping you're starting to understand now that there is a lot of work that will go into this. Um, so that is just the PQQ stage. So hopefully, if everything goes well, let's go back. There you go, PQQ. So hopefully, if everything goes well and you've answered your questions appropriately, what they'll then do is that then then they'll say, oh, you know what, you've done a pretty good bid uh, so far. Let's put you in the ITT. Now, this is the information the invitation to tender stage. So at this stage, they've they've weeded out the no hopers, and now they're down to the the, the reasonable few that would be likely to provide a good quality service. Now. If you thought the PQQ was bad enough, now unfortunately I, I do I do have some examples of ITTs, but due to confidentiality reasons, I can't provide them to I can't actually put them up on this presentation. Uh, but um, I'll give you an idea of, of of the length of it in a second. But um, as I said, um, you know it, it includes details of how the service will be run. It includes really detailed financial information and history. Um, they'll give you marking schedules. In other words, what they'll do is that they'll tell you how it's going to be marked, so you can get an idea as to how to put in uh, a good tender. And those with the best, those with the best mark, or that with the best mark, I should say, will be selected. Now, what they will normally do is that they will they will choose two people. They will they, they and this is generally the way things are going at the moment. They'll they'll provide they'll they'll look at two people. So they'll look at the the first and the second, and essentially. So what they'll do, what they'll say to the first person is they'll say, yep, you can have this service. 
Um, but if, for whatever reason, you decide to back out, we're going to give it to your alternative. So, so that way they don't have to go through the entire process all over again. And what happens is, is that all parties will then be informed of the outcome as well. So whether or not you've applied for the PQQ stage or the ITT stage, everybody else will be told at the end of that the ITT stage, at the end of the selection stage, who has actually won the bid. Um, now, as I said, unfortunately, I can't give you any examples of the ITT at the moment. But to give you um, a, a reasonable idea as to how big an ITT is, remember earlier on we saw this one here, the PQQ. Um, let's put that up on the end. Here we go. And we realized that they're, they're asking 15,000 words. That will probably increase that, that probably to around about 50 or 60 pages long, probably, if you put that in, maybe, maybe a bit less than that, maybe about... 50, yeah, probably about 50 pages, I reckon, of just for the ITT. You're looking sometimes, depending upon the service of an ITT, maybe up to 300 pages. And I've seen, I've seen bids at that sort of length. I've seen bids um, up to 400 pages as well. So it gives you an idea of, of, of the amount of work that you're going to have to do, and hence, therefore, the preparation that you'll need to do in order to put these really good bids in. So um, I hopefully I haven't scared you too much. I'm sure I have, but uh, but yeah, so. You know, this is where the meat of the the the, the um, your 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 argument will will effectively be written up in. So let's go to the next stage. Now the next stage is the contract. So what there will be. Remember earlier on, we said at the memorandum of information stage. Normally they would have some form of draft contract in place. So the bulk of the contract is already there. Uh, but what you'll do is you'll you might want to sort of like put some minor amendments in the contract for whatever reason. Maybe they notice or you notice something that you're not too happy with or something which um, is impossible to provide. But you know, minor amendments can be made at this stage, um, but not major amendments. Because if it's a major amendment, then you could be challenged at the, at the, at the PQQ or the ITT stage. It can only be minor amendments. Um, and normally, the contract will include, oops, normally the contract will include um, clauses for things like performance, termination, and duration. So, if they figure that you're not providing the service, there's a, there's normally a termination clause in there. Um, they'll normally performance manage you to make sure that you are providing the service to the to the right level. Um, and they're normally financial incentives associated with performance as well. So, if you're doing a really good service, you might even get more out of it. But if you're doing a really poor service, they might, might withhold funding as well. But it all depends upon the, 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 the contract itself. And finally, um, there is the mobilization stage. So if you go back to the go back to the original oops, go back to the original um, uh, process, you've got the mobilization, which is the last stage. Um, this particular stage uh, is, is essentially what if you remember the the um, the tender that we looked at just a minute ago, they wanted um, the due service. They wanted the service effectively from June, which is a three-month stage. Um, and as I said, you know, the contract is periodically reviewed to ensure the contractor is doing his or her job. The mobilisation stage is a stage whereby you actually say, "Yep, I'm going to go ahead and provide the service." Um, and normally they'll give you maybe a month or so just to get yourself sorted out and and, and providing the service. Um, and so, in a nutshell, that is it, really. Um, just a few things that I just um, I realised I haven't put down on this um, presentation, but something that you might want to be aware of. Um, let's go back to that PQQ state, PQQ again. Here we are. Now, even though this particular CCG has asked these questions, it doesn't mean to say that every CCG will ask the same questions. In actual fact, they're not going to do that. Um, this bid for this, this tender, for example, is going to be much more different than 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 you know another CTG's one because they're going to want different um, attributes. That, you know, um, one might put more emphasis upon financials, another one might put more emphasis on. Yeah, I'm just going to mute that again. So somebody somebody else might put more emphasis on. Um, say standard operating procedures, or uh, more emphasis on clinical governance. Um, so it, it really depends upon the tender itself. But they will let you know um, what what they will want. But even though we've got this particular sample, it doesn't mean to say that um, you can just literally copy and paste your answers from one to the other. There will be differences. Um, 
let's go back again. Sorry, uh, I was uh, rather mistaken. There. Ah, there we go. Now, summary. It's going to be painful. Um, hopefully, I've I've shocked you enough to let you know that this isn't going to be a very easy task, and you're going to need other people around you to to help you in this. Now, if it's, even if it's not with PPL, it's not with Farm Plus, you need to team up with somebody um, around you to take on some of the work. Um, you're very likely to need um, expert bid writers as well. Um, I mean, I've done this personally myself um, and, and, and for my sins, but even even I, for example, I'm going to find it difficult to write bids. Um, you, you really do need somebody who, who absolutely knows what they're doing. and uh, we, we, we have got expert bid writers on our books now um, and, and, and we're working with them to put in our, our infrastructure into place and, and, and if you need to use our resources and if you need to get that level of support then feel free to contact me. Um, you're going to be, as you can probably see, there's a lot of work. Be prepared to be rejected many times. Um, I, mean, uh, I mean, I've been rejected many times and, you know, various girlfriends and so forth. but. Uh, um, I suppose you could actually argue the same way, really, couldn't you? So, uh, if you're going to be rejected, don't take it personally. You know, remember it's uh, it's not my fault, it's hers type thing. But uh, um, coming back to the point, and before I let anything more loose, um, you, you're going to be rejected a number of times before before you're going to uh, before you um, before you get on with this. Yeah. So, um, just bear that in mind. Now, all it takes is one yes. Remember your proposal, yeah? For those of you who are married and regret it now, all it took was that one time and it made your world. Um, I'm not sure if you feel of it the same way now, and my wife is just next to me and about to hit me. But uh, if you do feel that way now, all it takes is that one yes, and you're going to be married to that contract. Whether or not you're going to like it in a year's time is something different, but uh, it, it really is up to you. So all it takes is that one yes, and, um, and 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 take it from there. Now, we will help you to look for tenders if you want. Okay. Um, we, as you said, you know, as I said earlier, I've shown you the website. Um, I am looking out for those out there. There's going to be a whole load coming out in the near future. So, for example, I can um, I saw a few on emergency hormonal contraception um, from the from the local authority recently. I've even seen a few from smoking cessation, but there's going to be a lot more coming out because a lot more of these um, are going to be up for renewal very soon. So, um, as I said earlier, look at those websites. Even if we do miss one, um, do do make sure that you keep an eye out on there. And remember, this is also a new skill that must be learned. Um, GPs have been doing this since uh, since. Probably uh, I don't know since since probably the the, the the fish crawled out into land type thing. So um, they, they've been doing this for quite a while and they're pretty good at this. Um, the problem is that we as pharmacists have not really learnt this because we've never really had to. And um, just bear in mind that this is something that unfortunately, if if, if we're going to take this one step further, we're going to have to learn these new skills. Now, I'm going to finish off with um, a little slide that I, I, I found here, and, and I'll leave you um, a couple of minutes to read on, read that one. And I do apologize for anybody who likes Justin Bieber. I actually hate him, but um, but if any of you do. Um, so, yeah, so tendering is like student loans and Justin Bieber. They just won't go away no matter how much we want them to. So that is the conclusion to... To this uh, um, webinar, um, I think I've just about run to time. Yes, I have. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the forum now. So if anybody wants to ask any questions, um, now is the time. Oh, actually, one other thing. Sorry, I forgot to say. Um, let me just quickly do this. Uh, uh, bear with me. I'm just going to. Oh, sorry, Justin B, but I'm just going to have to take you out of this one. Okay, um, if you need me, um, my email address. Okay, um, yeah, it's Stephen at farmplushealthy.co.uk. My number is 020-8863-2335. I'm hoping I'm not giving you my home number. Yeah, that is the right number. So that that's the number you can get me on at Pharma Plus if you want to. My email address is there. So. 
feel free to, to, to give me a shout. Um, I've had a special request come in, and um, there you go. I'm just going to blow that up. Somebody wants me to, uh, somebody that's interested in purchasing, purchasing that one for me. So um, feel free to. So yeah, so if anybody wants to ask any questions, now is the time. Um, if you've got the, you've got the text function, so uh, feel free to do so now. Now's your chance to do that. I've all shocked you into silence, have I? Okay, I'm going to unmute you all. So if there's anything going on in the background that you don't want me to hear, then then then, then just be careful. Okay, so anybody want to ask anything? Hi, this is Imran from um, uh, Island Churchill Pharmacy. Hi there. One of the things you've mentioned um, is with regards to um, you use the word V. When you say V, that means Pharma Plus, like. Is yeah. Pharma Plus hired expert bidders, or have you rather in consultation with expert bidders with regards to yeah, we've got the tendering and all that? Yeah, we've got we've got people on our we've actually approached different people, um, and what we're in the process of doing they're actually helping us to put our infrastructure in place at the moment. But remember, I mentioned to you the, the preparation work that we need to do to make sure that we're at, we've actually got the, the resources beforehand to um, to put everything together. But helping us with that, they are also expert bidders as well. So um, we, we as an organisation are probably going to be putting in bids on, on, on behalf of our, our members as well. <coughs> However, having said that, there may be times when, say, for example, you might not, I mean, hopefully that won't occur, but there may be times when you may not want to work with us or whatever. So if you do want to, uh, we could put you in contact with the people we work, we're work working with at the moment. and. Um, and 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 that you get on with it that way. So it could be two ways. We're, we're going to be putting in bids on your behalf as well. Does, does that answer the question? Um, okay. Uh, so as as like okay. So uh, Pharma Plus has hired these people. So as as a member, how does it benefit me? How does it benefit you? Okay, well, as, 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 as an independent, how does it benefit well, me? First, first of all, as you can probably see, the enhanced services are not going to work at all anymore. Yeah, even if you look on the PCC website at the moment, the Farm Plus website, I'm not Farm Plus, the um, the PSNC website, they're even they're even removing the, the term enhanced services now. So, the, the, for you as a member, what you, what we will do is we'll keep an eye out for any bids in your area. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing is, is that these people are actually on a commission only basis, so we're not going to be, we're not paying them to do nothing. In other words, if there is something in the area and we can organize something on your behalf, so say we'll come to you and say, look, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a service in your area that you want us to, to, to set something up for you. Um, then, then, and if you send us to meet you, we'll be in place. Is that, does it answer your question? But so, um, as a first step, I think we need to have a list of um, probably members that are, say, for example, around me. Yeah. So we need to be prepared for the forthcoming tender whenever it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. As a first step, I think each member should have a list of other members in the area. We're, we're, we're actually quite, we're, we're, for, for commercial sensitivity reasons, we don't provide that information. But there's nothing for us to say that if there is a service in your area, we, we, we will actually contact the areas. And some, some members might not want to know, they might want others to know that, that they're not members of Farm Plus. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, we can't do that for commercial sensitive reasons. So, unfortunately, that's probably not going to be possible, but um, I can relay that on and, 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 let him, um, and let him know about that. <laughs> yeah? Thank you. No problem. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry about it, but uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I think some beat members might not want to know about it. But I'll, I'll try my best for that one. But that's a, that's a good point. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay then. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, uh, put this to close now. Um, so as you said, you've got my um, email address. You've got my number. <coughs> the advice on this. Feel free to give me a shout. Um, and uh, let me just put my number up again. Uh, and again, this webinar is going to be on the internet uh, very soon. So I'm hoping in the next week or so, but uh, 
Um, if you want the slides, I'm going to be, I'm going to be issuing them to you with the slides, and also um, a little thank you certificate for attending this as well. So you can use it as part of your CPD as well. So uh, I hope, uh, thank you again. I think I've just hit it on the nail. Yeah, I've hit it at nine o'clock. And I'm going to let you go now. And um, I really hope uh, you have a good evening. And um, welcome to the evening process. Okay. Thank you very much, Devin. It was a nice session. Thank you very much. Take care now, yeah? Thanks. Okay. Bye now. Bye. So, I'm going to open this. And here, I'm going to open this. And here, I'm going to open this. And here, I'm going to open this.